Who? Welcome everyone to another episode of Home Assistant Series and in this episode we'll be making our own home automation project without writing any single line of code. Yes, by this project you'll be able to control up to 4 AC appliances using mobile dashboard and also web dashboard using one integration in Home Assistant and you can control those appliances from anywhere in this room within local area network only. So this video I'll be guiding you everything about how you can make it without having any knowledge of coding. So sit back and enjoy this journey. Let's get started. Now before starting the video, let me tell you an amazing feature of our sponsor LTM, which is a PCB designer based software company. And that feature is called as interacting with customers. Using LTM, you can easily share your PCB design file, maybe 2D or 3D and even schematic by just adding their email ID in the list. The client will receive a link using which he or she can easily visualize your schematic and PCB files without downloading any software on their system. Isn't this hassle free? Well, even you can try out this and many other features of LTM designer software for absolutely free by clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes, by clicking that link, you'll be getting an access of a free trial version of LTM designer software and if you find it interesting, you may purchase it later on. Okay, so coming back to the video. So here, first of all, we'll be configuring our home assistant dashboard account because we need to add an add on to support it for the home automation project. And what's that add on and how to add that? Let me guide you. So first of all, I'll go to my home assistant dashboard page by typing home assistant dot local colon 8123. Now here it will be asking me for username and password. So I'll quickly log into my account. Now in case you don't know how to install home assistant, uh, what you can say, image or uh, what you can say OS file onto your Raspberry Pi board to watch out our first episode of the series in which I have guided everything about this particular installation part okay so here I am logged into my account which is pretty neat and clean because I haven't added any of the widget except this uh, weather widget okay so now to add the add-on you first need to go to the configuration icon uh, option and here you need to go on to the add-ons part go to the add-on store and here are the add-ons that you can add to your home assistant account to you know make any of the iot project okay so here i'll search for esp home now esp home is such an add-on to home assistant which will help you to you know control your home appliances and not only that you can also monitor the census data and visualize it into this uh, home assistant dashboard and this is open source as well and the most important and the most uh, what you can say amazing thing about esp home is you don't need to have any coding knowledge no python no c no c plus plus nothing it's very easy to use it's it's beginner friendly as well as it doesn't require any prior knowledge okay so you'll be using the esp home platform here so after clicking on this you just need to click on the install button i'll click on the install now it will take some time to install it so i'll quickly fast forward this video okay so it is successfully installed onto our account and here uh, it will be starting on board and that is tick mark here and that we want of course and we also want to show in sidebar that means here okay so i'll click on this uh, button and as you can see the esp home option appear here so it will be easy for us to configure it so i'll turn on this button uh, that's that's pretty much it now you can click on the start button so it will start uh, running the esp home onto the raspberry pi board okay so it got started running so now i will click on the open web ui button which will take me uh, inside esp home okay and now here we can add devices so let's start adding the first device so click on the new device button click on continue here we need to name our device so i'll name it as esp okay click on next button now we need to select which esp board we are using so we are using the esp32 board in our case so i'll select this only click on the next button and congratulations uh, you have successfully added a device here i'll click on the skip button here now here i'll click on the edit button which will open up kind of a text editor you can say which is written in dot yaml format now what is this actually so this file contains all the details about what sid name and password you want to connect your esp device with and uh, what, uh, which pin you are using as an output, which pin you are using as an input, everything we need to mention in this particular file, which after writing it, it'll be uploaded inside our ESP32 board. Okay, so it's not a coding, it's kind of defining every input and output and credentials. Okay, so here, first of all, what we need to do is we need to define the board name here, which is defined as ESP32 dev board. But here we are using the do it dev kit v1 board, so we need to type in that particular format. Now, in case to check, uh, which uh, uh, what what is the uh, tag of your particular board you can go to the esp home website i'll quickly take you to the esp home website okay so esphome.io is the url and here you can go inside the esp32 board and here click on this link okay 
So here they have the list of devices and their particular tag. So you can copy from here and paste it inside the YAML file. In my case, I'm using this particular board. So I'll click here to copy and I will paste that ID here completely fine okay so that's my board which i am using after that here you need to provide the SID name and password which is right now inside my secrets file okay I'll, if i open the secrets folder now uh, secrets file it is mentioned here so what happens is whenever you are initializing this esp home for the first time it will ask you for this SID name and password as i already initialized is before starting this video it's already created in my secrets folder okay so if, if you're doing it for the first time it will definitely ask uh, it to you if it is not asking to you don't worry I'll I'll still let you know how to do that okay what you can do is here you can remove this line and add your own SID name and password of your Wi-Fi router that will also work completely fine okay so I'll quickly write that credentials here great okay so we provided the Wi-Fi credentials we provided the board name and now we need to provide which pin we are using as an output now as we are controlling four AC appliances, we need to provide four different pins here and you have to declare it as an output so how to declare it well everything is mentioned on the ESP home website I'll quickly take you to that particular page so here we have different type of sensors here so if you are using any of the sensor you can just click on that particular sensor and you'll get a ready-made script for that particular thing I will I'll let you know one example okay so here's the CT the current uh, what you can say the current sensor basically if I click on that current sensor uh, it will open up a page on ESP home website and here is that script that you have to mention inside that particular code to read the data of this CT sensor okay in our case we are using a relay which is nothing but a binary device we can turn on the relay we can turn off the relay so what I'll do is I'll go to my uh, what you can say light component and I'll click on the binary light uh, option okay okay so here is the binary light option and we need to write these particular things to add a button inside our home assistant dashboard using which we'll be able to turn on and off a particular gpio on our esp32 board okay so what i'll do i'll quickly copy this thing and go back to my home assistant uh, page and here i'll paste the thing that the simple uh, lines you need to add to make your home automation project so by writing this line you can easily control the gpio 16 uh, uh using the home assistant dashboard via a button okay but what we, we what we want is we want four different buttons to be controlled or four but uh, different relays to be controlled so how to add the four different devices <laughs> let me guide you okay so first of all let's just modify this thing so i will remove the name as a desk lamp i will rewrite is at light one okay similarly what i'll do here is i'll write here as gpio 15 okay now to add a next button okay what we can do is we just need to copy this particular line of uh, code we can say but it's not code actually i'll paste it here and similarly i can write uh, light 2 similarly i can write light 3 and similarly i can write light 4 okay pretty simple we have created four different uh, light variables you can see similarly for the output side we need to change it here okay uh, also I forgot this thing it will be light output one light output two light output three light output four now here you notice something there's a cross icon appeared here so this particular YML file is kind of a you know checking the errors in real time while writing the code itself so it says there is one error there is no such light one light output one declared inside the output side okay so that's the error but it will be soon solved if i write output one here as you can see this error got solved similarly what i'll do i'll add four different output part as well for four different gpio pins okay it will be light, light output two which will be at gpio two similarly i'll write light output three which will be at gpio four and similarly i'll add light output 4 will be uh, which will be at gpio 22 as you can see there is no such error on this particular yml file and this uh this these lines you need to add to control a particular gpio pin using home assistant pretty simple right so yeah that was all about what you have to do on the home assistant side uh talking about the script okay but uh, as i mentioned this 15 to 4 and 22 gpio pins so why like how i add how i decided these pins well i already designed my own custom uh, designed pcb for this home automation project whose order i gave directly to jlc pcb so even you can try out jlc pcb for your custom pcb design uh, project orders by just uploading the gerber file of the pcb project select the color masking if you want it and just pay for your order if you select the fastest delivery option you may get the pcbs delivered within seven working days
So do try out JLC PCB for your next PCB purchase. After receiving the PCB, you one by one shoulder all the components on it. And well, if you select the SMT assembly service of the JLC PCB, you don't even need to shoulder any components on it because they will give you all the components already shouldered on the PCB. We already uh, ordered one of that PCB with SMT assembly process. So just stay tuned and subscribe to the channel and we'll soon making a video for that as well. Okay. So yeah, we got the PCB ready by shouldering all the components, which looks something like this. So as all the relays are connected to this respective uh, GPIO pins, I have mentioned those pins here. Okay. So uh, now let's just see how to configure the home assistant dashboard. Okay. So first of all, I'll click on the save button here and now I'll install this into my ESP32 board. Now how to install it? Well, you first need to connect that ESP32 board with the Raspberry Pi board on which the home assistant server is running. Okay. After that, just click on the install button and select this third option called as plugged into the the computer running the ESP home dashboard. Okay. So I'll select this. Now here is the port on which the ESP32 is connected. I'll click it. And as you can see, it started compiling that particular code and it will soon start uploading the code onto the ESP32 board. But make sure you press and hold the flash or the boot button on the ESP32 board so that it can initialize uh, the upload process. Okay. Okay, so now as you can see the code got uploaded successfully and it started running the code as well. Here as you can see it got connected to the Wi-Fi network which is nothing but the SMS underscore GeoFi, okay. So it's successfully connected, it's got, uh, it is successfully running as well. So the ESP home part is uh, kind of completed now. You can click on the stop button and by clicking stop button you're not actually stopping the ESP home or home assistant or ESP32. You're just closing this log you can say, okay. Click on the stop button and here inside the notification uh, icon you can see we have discovered new devices. So the new device is already discovered by our uh, home assistant platform and you can check it out here let's just check it out and here is our esp device that we have configured click on the configure button to add inside the dashboard click on the submit button and yeah it found one device i'll add it to a new area called as studio click on the add button and i'll select oh studio still didn't appear let's just try once more time Click on add studio is already in use. Wow. Great. But studio is not visible here. <laughs> Let's just go, go with the living room and click on the finish button. You can see one device with four entities is added inside our uh, home assistant platform. Okay. And four entities are nothing but the light one, light two, light three and light four. And now we can add this inside our dashboard. Let me show you how click on the overview button, uh, click on this icon and, uh, let me just show you. Okay. Click on this icon to add a dashboard, click on add card. And here, as you can see, the entities appeared here. I can select this, which will help me to turn on and off the three different lights, or I can select this to individually set the light. Let's set uh, every light individually. I'll click on this button, click on the light one option only. Okay. And uh, yeah, everything is pretty much fine. Click on the save button. As you can see, the light one widget added successfully. And similarly, I'll add the other three lights as well. Okay, so we successfully added all the four lights and now I can click on the done button and we are done with configuring everything inside the home assistant dashboard and with the ESP home as well. Now what I'll do, I'll click, uh, quickly take out the ESP32 board from the Raspberry Pi board and uh, insert it into the PCB project. After that, I'll connect all the appliances with the PCB project and now let's just power up the project and let's see this in action. Now, when I tested the first demo, there was a little problem, which was when I turn on the appliance from the phone, it was turning it off and it was happening vice versa. So there was a problem of invert logic. So by adding one single line, the problem was solved. And that single line was here. I went inside the ESP home section and here I uh, clicked on the edit button and on the output side, I just added this line called as inverted colon true in all the four output devices and by installing this code the uh, project was working pretty much fine so let me show you the working demo of the project come along with me okay so here i have downloaded the mobile application of home assistant whose link i'll be mentioning in the description of this video and here is that hardware setup so let's try to control all the bulbs using this phone one two three 
and 4. So as you can see, I'm able to control all the 4 bulbs using this mobile application and the latency is very, very, very less and it should be very less because this is all running in the local area network only and we can control these all bulbs using the web dashboard as well using a laptop. Let me show you that as well. So here's the laptop dashboard and as you can see, I'm able to control the lights from here as well and the real-time response of this is happening, uh, no, reflecting inside the mobile dashboard as well. So we can control from here and from here and we'll be getting the feedback on both the sides. So that was all about the project. So yeah, that was all about making your own home automation project using Home Assistant without writing any single line of code. And while writing those descriptive lines is not considered as a code, come on, right? And yes, we are still left with so many things to be made using Home Assistant like controlling appliances with Google Assistant, Siri, Alexa and so many more. Also, do let me know your suggestion about what should I try in Home Assistant, like what add-ons, what integration should I try with Home Assistant and let's make different IoT projects using it. So do drop your suggestion, your thoughts about what should we make next on Home Assistant and I'll definitely try to make it just for you guys. Also, do click the like button if you love this Home Assistant series and yeah, that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next Excel Explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS. अल्लाह मस सीक्रेट्स तो आने पूछ चुद नहीं मैं पहला थी नाकी दी तो इटले एक सेकेंड डिल